and welcome to another Thoughts on Leadership. And this one's called The Day Our Icons Let Us Down. In fact, it's more like the year our icons let us down, isn't it? Because it seems to be going on and on and on. Our whole financial services industry seems to have let us all down. But it got me to thinking a little bit about, well, how did we arrive at this? What really was going on? And I was reflecting back on the 70s, and I've talked about the 70s before, and here in the United Kingdom at that time, we had some real icons of industry, you know, like Marks and Spencers for the retail industry, and National Westminster Bank in the banking industry, and uh, uh, British Airways in the airline industry, and, and it was the same in Northwest, in the North America, and so forth. There was these real icons of industry, and everybody else was trying to live up to them and be like them. And, but it didn't matter because they were the best, they were the greatest, and everybody was below them. And it was like everybody had their place, if you like. And then the 80s came and, and the arrival of technology and the world was starting to change. And suddenly, in fact, those very names I gave you there nearly went bankrupt. And they, I mean, they seriously went through a stage then when, and a lot did, a lot of organizations did go bankrupt over that period of time. Some of those icons did disappear. And what happened was, we started to think of doing business in a different way. And suddenly there was these organizations coming up that were rising to the top, coming from nowhere and becoming icons. And you know, for example, Google, just like from nowhere, innovative creative company comes and it's right at the top of the tree and it's wow and, and, and so forth. And it's interesting because these new icons, though, weren't like your Marks and Spencers or your, your, your icons before, uh, where they just, when they got to the top, it was easy to stay there. These ones could rise and then collapse again, uh, if you like. In fact, I was talking to a chief executive, and he was saying to me that, you know, although we're the best in our industry and we're the leaders of our industry, um, our managers sometimes think that we've arrived because we're at the top. In, in reality, we've gone from here to here, but here is actually a stepping stone to there, even though here at this moment in time is the top of our industry. And if we aren't prepared to go there, and we think we've arrived, others will overtake us. And, and it's a bit like that, that uh, you, know, you don't go, go to the top and then sort of win the right to stay there forever and a day. And that's a, that's a significant shift to the way business um, uh, has changed, if you like. And so what was going on? Well, I suppose we went through the age when, you know, we had industrialization, we had all these various ages, and then we had a technology age. And then we moved into what could be called the creativity age, because it was about being creative, it was about doing new things, it was about finding niche markets, it was about going places and, 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 and coming out with new ways of doing things. And what happened was some of the industries started to get a little bit cocky, and what we've seen is the banking industry starting to become creative, like really creative, designing packages and things that have been designed by computer technicians and mathematicians, not bankers, and trying to sell packages that just didn't have the substance to them. And we went from an, an industry which was like only contributing a small portion to our economy to, you know, contributing a bigger and bigger and bigger in proportion to the economy, when actually at the end of the day, it isn't only a financial services industry, it doesn't make anything, and yet it, we're starting to rely on it, um, you know, far too much. So I'm not against being creative, and you know, I believe in it completely, but it has to be balanced, okay? And this is the bit that I wanna spend a moment with you on and challenge you and, and get you to think a little bit. So let's see what I've got here. Um, when you're being creative in your organization, if you think about the banking industry being creative, that's fine. But along with it has to become sound judgment. You, you, you need to put the systems and the processes and the procedures and, and the policies in place to ensure that judgment is yeah, there's judgment about, well, is this the right thing? Should we be in this market? Is this the right thing to be doing in the long term? How will this affect things in the long term? Okay, so the sort of things that we need to be considering in our organization is, are we doing an audit on our decision-making process? Are we doing an audit on our planning process? Are we doing an audit on our, on our strategic strategy planning, thinking, and so forth? 
In other words, are we constantly thinking about what policies, procedures, processes do we need to have here that keep us on a straight and narrow, make us walk in, in a direction uh, that doesn't take us wandering off at, a, at an angle? And, and, and then the, the next thing is about our people. Do we have our people engaged in that process as well? Okay, have we got our people understanding the value of let's, let's make sure that these controls and everything else are used so that it casts a critical eye on what we're doing and it enables us to be more effective. Um, you see, a lot of organizations, the controls and systems that are, putting, are being put into place uh, are seen as the enemy. They're seen as the, as the inhibitor of creativity and innovation. When in, in fact, it's, they're not an inhibitor at all. They, they're the parameters by which we don't get sidetracked, we don't go off at an angle, we don't start creating things that you know, are gonna completely destroy an economy, uh, which is, is uh, what's happened in the past. So, your questions for this month. Has your business got the systems and the controls in place to ensure that you do not steer off into a false reality? And you'll know what I mean by false reality. Is our strategy sustainable and based on sound judgment? Okay. Our decision-making processes and planning processes, are they you know, aligned with our strategy? I was reading reports just recently about where if the decisions are being made without a plan, they have a higher percentage rate of failure. Do our controls and systems serve us well? And who is in charge of good governance? You know, is the people in charge of good governance, are they respected in the business? Because I actually think we went through an age there where good governance uh, was seen as, as, as the, 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 ba you know, the, the, the black sheep in the family. They're the ones who are a little bit of a troublemaker. Uh, actually, they're not. They're, they're, they're the part that keep us straight. So that's, that's about thinking about your business as a whole. Now I want to think, ask you to think about your people. And this is, this is the, the bit that's so important, folks. Are your people engaged into the, the need for the systems and the processes and, 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 and so forth? You know, I was, I was talking to one of the banks. It's the bank I use, HSBC. And, and they were saying they're so proud of their leaders who have you know, been considered as being conservative in the past, but have, have, because they have been controlled, are not the ones at the front of the queue asking for money from the, from the um, governments and so forth. Because they actually respect governance. They actually respect the, the systems and processes. You know, and it's where, where those are being used that comes sustainable business. And at the end of the day, it's sustainable business we're after, and not just flash in the pan business. So are our people engaged in that? Are they involved in the decision-making process and planning process and, 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 and aligned to it? Do we encourage creativity, but at the same time, apply good judgment to creativity? When people are coming up with ideas, are we just picking up and running off of them as though, wow, this is the greatest thing? Or do we say, great idea, brilliant, now let's, let's measure it, let's you know, put good judgment in place uh, with it? And, and do our people freely contribute with their uh, ideas without feeling that the checks are going to in inhibit them in some way? So it's, it's a time when we need to think about this. It's a time when we need to be saying, Good governance is something that we embrace. It doesn't have to be an inhibitor. I'm worried that the pendulum is going to swing all the way the other way, that we're going to go, oh, well, look at the mess everything's got into. Now let's make sure that we put heavy systems and controls into, into place and we lose the creativity and we lose the innovation. And I'm saying to you now, at a time when we're supposed to be going through a recession, and yeah, I'm sorry, but I don't see a recession as, as, as necessarily the, a, a completely a bad thing. It's a good reality check time for all of us. You know, what sort of business have we got? There's a lot of businesses that are gone that really were, were living on borrowed time anyway. So the re it's not the recession that's an issue here. It's, you know, how are we going to use this recession time? It's reality check time to consider our business and say, okay, guys, what are we going to do? How are we going to get our people engaged? How are we going to get our people thinking about uh, being innovative, being creative, but within good, solid judgment, and uh, rather than just like you know, coming up with ideas and running around like, like fools and, and destroying the business or destroying the economy? So I hope those questions have been valuable. I hope those questions have got you thinking. I hope you're enjoying Thoughts on Leadership. And please, you know, your questions are always welcome. It's great to hear from you. So until next month, you have a really great month. And thanks for listening.